In this video, we're back to working on D8, the old dozer. And we're gonna get her running here, but before we do that, quite a few things we need to do. Like, pull the valves out of the new head for some reason? And what, what the heck is this cap? What does this warning mean? Should I shut it off? So many questions to be answered in this video. Especially, what is this? Hey guys, Josh with the Update Channel, and look at that old dozer there. That thing's pretty cool. I, I don't know what the heck's going on with that blade it has, but uh, some sort of zombie apocalypse thing. So we're working on the D8 today, and a few things. So I got a lot of comments of people saying how I should troubleshoot the D8 in the previous video, and I appreciate those. I was told to remove the cylinder head in that situation. I was not told to troubleshoot where the oil was necessarily going, but to look for signs of it inside the engine. That's why we were pulling the cylinder head. Pulled the cylinder head, didn't really see anything internal to the engine, found there was oil on the valves though, so it has been decided that the head is going to be replaced. That's why we are putting a new head on it. So we're gonna be putting that new head on and basically getting it back together, and hopefully that takes care of the problem. Let's get to work. So you can see our friend the D8 there, and this is the old head. You can see I've put all the valves back in the head. Did it while you weren't watching. But we've got a big problem, or I should say 12 little problems, and that is the bridges. You see, the new head has what they call bridge dowels, and bridge dowels are for a different style bridge than we have. See these guys? It's basically a really long dowel, like an alignment dowel you'd see in a block. Well, the problem is you cannot remove these dowels, at least we couldn't find a way, and the proper way is from cat, you have to remove the valves adjacent to the dowel. Then you can remove the dowel. And let me tell you, removing the dowel even with the valves out is very difficult. So if you're wondering why I'm removing the valves on a new head, it's because we're trying to remove the bridge dowels. Now, why would you need to remove the dowels? They came from cat this way, right? Yes, they did. But... They are not meant for the, the bridges we have. We could get the correct style bridges, but they're quite expensive. So it was decided that it's easier to remove the dowels and pay extra in labor than it is to buy the other bridges. And the other bridges are adjustable bridges, which needlessly complicated in my opinion, but they do work. So just like in the other video, we were pulling the valves, the valve springs and the rotor coils out while well, we're doing that on the new head which is unfortunate but luckily they're pretty simple harder it's harder to get the dowels out of the head than it is to remove the valves so you can see the dowel easier with the valve springs out of the way now if you look at where the valves are you can see there is no valve seal even on the head we got here of course, I didn't expect there would be valve seals because there weren't valve seals on the head we pulled off and that head was only two years old. Now, I couldn't find any sort of retrofit to add valve seals to this head. I'm sure there is one out there, but couldn't find one in the CAT system. So what was decided was that we're just gonna replace the head due to the oil being on the valves. That's really the only place we could find oil in the engine, I mean, obviously in the oil pan and stuff, but oil where it wasn't supposed to be was on the valves. Now, of course, you're going to get oil on the valves if it's idle a lot because you're not creating very much pressure in the intake ports then. And even though it's a diesel at idle, it doesn't have very much pressure in those cylinders, or not cylinders, but the intake runners, so it can allow oil to seep past the valve guide and into the intake port, which will cause oil residue to be on your valves and get in your cylinder. So this is a normal slide hammer style dowel pin puller. This is a cat tool. And I'm gonna cut quite a few minutes out of there, hammering it on there. And I'm, for your benefit, reducing the sound. Hey, look at that. First try. So do I think this is gonna fi fix the oil consumption problem? I'm not certain, but the problem is no one's certain. And this is under warranty still, so it's the best that we could come up with for the cause and to make the customer happy and for CAT and Western States to 
do the best we can to try and make this engine, while it's still under warranty, be happy for the customer. And I got a lot of comments saying, oh, you need to check for, maybe the piston rings are upside down or a lot of various other things. And it was determined that we need to stop here. There's no signs of cylinder damage. So really no reason to go much farther in, especially on a dozer where getting the oil pan off and stuff is a huge pain in the butt. And you can see I'm using some high vacuum grease. It helps hold the keepers in. It's uh, just a easy trick to do because the keepers will not always stay there if you don't use some sort of retaining compound. Not actual retaining compound, but something to make them stick to there. I'm afraid people use Vaseline. That'd probably work too, but I like the cat high vacuum grease. Seems to work really well. Now, I've been working on engines for 17 years. I've never had to pull all the valves and valve springs out of a new head. That's uh, a lot of work and kind of, kind of depressing all the labor that went into that, assuming you know, considering that that head was already fully assembled. So you can see we've placed the head here now, reused the head bolts, torqued everything, except for, if you notice, some of the head bolts are missing. Remember, the reason that would be is because the longer head bolts actually go through the rocker arms like this, or the rocker arm pedestals at least. So what you have to do is you have to do most of the head bolts, then you can put the rocker arm shafts on, then you can actually install the rocker shafts and torque them. So I'd already torqued the 200, then 330, then 330 before. And if you were a keen observer, I actually had the rocker shafts, uh, the way they came off, I had them flip there initially. I'd take them right off and put them back on. It only took a minute, but they uh, I had them labeled one and two, and I hadn't noticed I'd labeled them until I went to put them back on. And then I was like, oh, shoot. So not sure if anyone caught that. But see behind me is the world famous Trash Fire International, and we got a little story about that guy. Let's get to it. This week's Destruction of the Week, we have a 3406 from Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Number one Destruction of the Week submitter, and you can see this 3406, unlike the one I'm working on, has an extra inspection hole because looks like some rod bolts came loose. Major damage there. Thank you to Jerry for sending those pictures. And and the next one we have here as well. This is unfortunately Trash Fire International. You can see that we got some coolant in the oil here. Not some, we got a lot. So when this came in, it wasn't running and verified that the EGR cooler was cracked. It was, it failed both a leak test on the truck and it failed a leak test removed. I've got the evidence here. So this was a vacuum leak test while it was on. Obviously pulling air in from the exhaust side to the cooler side. And also when I did remove it, also sucking air in. This glove was filled with air, so obviously it pulled it out. So no Monday morning cornerbacks telling me that, oh, you misdiagnosed it. So the EGR cooler did test bad, but we've got something way worse going on here, folks. This is me trying to get the oil pan off. This international, great design international. I cannot get the oil pan off, even with it jacked up from the axle as far as I could get it. So anyway, I had to slide it out there. And as you can see, yeah, something's going on. Number two cylinder appears. I'm going to, who knows? It could be cracked head, blown head gasket. I am not an international expert, folks, but we got big problems with that truck right now. Now let's get back to the vehicle at hand. I almost said truck. This is obviously not a truck. It's a dozer. It's an enormous dozer. So heads on, you know what's next, folks. Valve adjustment. Now valve adjustment on these, now this, I believe technically this is a 346C. Someone told me that because it has the 12 point style head bolts. And folks, I am not an expert on all the fine minute details between a B model and a C model. I know there's a peak and I believe all the peaks are C models, but I'm not actually even sure of that. I've worked on quite a few of these over the years, but to tell you the truth, I don't know the minute differences between each model. So they're very, very simple to adjust. There's no jakes on this one. There's no IVAs. There's no injectors to adjust. It's just 15 thousandths on the intake, 30 thousandths on the exhaust, which is also the same as the 3406Es and C15s. 
And one thing I gotta be really careful on this dozer is basically you have to think that anything you drop past the engine is like an abyss. Because depending on what part of the belly pan it drops into, you will not be retrieving that thing. And the belly pans were not dropped, so I was being extra slow and extra careful not to drop anything, including parts. Uh, I did drop my little pocket pry bar that I'd only bought like two months ago down there. Now, luckily, it happened to fall right where the oil drain port was on the bottom, so I was able to retrieve it. But this was very nerve-wracking just working over this thing the entire time. Like, I took all the pens and everything out of my pocket, especially after my pocket screwdriver fell off, but it's a little nerve-wracking. This one has the screwdriver-style adjusters also, which I am not a big fan of. I like the T-handle or hex head style where you can actually leave it in the adjuster. The flathead blade one's not a big fan of that. So once the overhead was done there, which, let me tell you, rotating that engine also not the easiest you can't get to the damper in the front you have to do it with the turning tool on the side but the pinholes on the other side of the engine so pretty difficult luckily i had a an apprentice uh, working with me so that really made it easy i'm not exactly sure how i would have done it elsewise i probably would have just had to go on by valve overlap and not pin the engine it's not my favorite but it's usually good enough for doing a, an accurate valve adjustment because you have a few thousandths variants or not few thousands. You have a few degrees variants you can go with, and if your one or six is in overlap, that pretty much tells you that you're at TDC on that cylinder. So I'm just doing the exhaust, the number one here. And once that's done, then we can put more parts on the engine. Now this being the first dozer I've ever really worked on it, really gives me a new appreciation for the, the field guys that do engine work on these. It's so much harder to do almost everything and we're in the shop, and this is a fairly newer engine, so it's a lot cleaner. It is just so much harder than a truck one where it opens up pretty easily. So you can see the valve covers are on now. Valve cover base is on. I haven't painted it yet. I'm going to paint the head. The thermostat housing's on. Coolant hoses. Uh, I've got the oil lines. The oil return line, that was that was hard to get on there. It's behind the, the oil filter, which that's also hard to get to. But you can see that the uh, it looks easy to get to there, but it's quite a bit farther from what the picture looks like. So still have to put the AC on, but here we go. So once all that's in there, able to fill it. And I was a little confused because I couldn't really find the radiator cap. At least not a cap I've ever seen. And I was like, well, this looks like the radiator cap. And sure enough, this thing is the radiator cap. What the heck is going on here? I have I have never seen a radiator cap like that. I've worked on much larger cooling systems too for like 3500 series, never seen that. Now it did fire right up and this buzzer was going off, which I had no idea what the warning was there. I had to look it up. It's actually a coolant flow sensor, which I've never heard of before. But basically it's like a flapper valve that when coolant is pushing against it, it's a switch and it'll tell you if coolant is flowing or not. Now we checked it out. Coolant level is fine. That's your throttle, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it, there is no sound quality that will give you the feeling of sitting right next to that exhaust. It moves you. It shakes you uh, being that close. And that muff, that you know, exhaust system is really short, so it doesn't muffle that well. It is a little smoky, but it is an older 3406, so that's not too surprising. It smoked like that before. Can't say if that has anything to do with the oil consumption problem. We'll have to wait and find out. But I want to take a little second to discuss this guy. This here is, we'll just call him The Apprentice. And The Apprentice, this was actually his last day. He'd been working with me here on this for the last couple days. But he's, he's been working Western States for over a year now. That's actually him, when, like his first week here. He's been in a few videos. I never mentioned him, but he's just kind of in the background. Uh, if you're very familiar with my videos, you'll catch him from time to time. Didn't want me to use his name or show his face, but just want to wish him the best on his future endeavors. I'd like, thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any constructive criticism or feedback, leave it in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.